Hey, before I jump in any further, I'd like to take just a moment to introduce myself. My name is Elliot. My wife, Tiffany, who is up there with me, and I have the privilege of pastoring this group of people called Lifeline Church. Give it up for yourselves, because you're awesome. Oh, do yourself better than that. You can do it. Come on, let's go. Yeah, you awesome. I believe you're not here by accident, but I believe God has a message of hope, encouragement, and love. He wants to speak into your life today. If you believe that, say amen. 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 amen activates our faith. I want to take just a minute and look straight into the camera as well and say all of you tuning in on Facebook, all of you watching later on YouTube, this, this message is for you too. Just because you weren't able to make it in today, uh, a mess- God has a message for you too. You too. A message of hope, encouragement, and love. And if you believe that, type amen. Man, we do what we can around here. It's all good. It's all good, and we hope we get to meet you in person uh, later on down the road as well. But I'm happy that there's a venue that you can can visit without being able to be here. God bless you, and I hope I get to meet you really soon. You're not here by accident, everybody. You're not here by accident. I don't know how you ended up here today. I don't know how you ended up tuning in online today. I'm not sure, but I know this. It's God himself that's been, that's been drawing you to be here. All the situations, all the different things, the billboards you saw or the sign, the sign out front. I don't know how you got here. The, the Google ads, man, I had someone tell me it was just like the, the, the Google ad was the one that was closest to it, and so they just came. But all of that, let's put all that aside for a minute because I believe it's, it's God who directs his, his people where he wants them to go. That means you're here for a reason. You're here for a reason is to hear that message today. So we're in week two of our series called It's Not You, It's, it's Me. You guys are getting it. It's only been one week. You guys are already on it. It's not you, it's me. And no, I did not get this message from George Costanza. Like three people are like, yeah, Seinfeld, awesome. <laughs> this, this series, this message series is all about uh, your relationships all having one thing in common. You. All your relationships have one thing in common. You. And that, with it's, it's in yellow and it's underlined because a, there's a little spot in your bulletin there where you can put in some notes. We, we created it so that you could put some notes in there and maybe it'll help you remember a little something about the message on down the road. Part of my job here is not to just entertain you for an hour. You're like, an hour? 30 minutes, okay? I won't take an hour. But not just to entertain you, to give you something that's going to help you all week long. There's me online. I hear me. I sound good. I like it a lot. Did y'all hear that? If you were online, you didn't hear that. That's a joke for us. See that? You you being here automatically, you win. This series is all about, it's, it's it's not outside of me. It's inside of me. What can I do with me to help my relationships all get better? The idea is if you focus on improving you, everybody wins. Everybody wins. Jesus said it like this in Matthew 7. And why worry about a speck in your friend's eye? A lot of you heard this. A lot of you preach this to others when they're trying to judge you. You're like, don't judge me, law guy. Get on out of here with that. The why worry about the speck in your friend's eye when you have a log in your own? How can you even think of saying to your friend, let me help you get rid of that speck in your eye? Let me help you with that. You got a little tiny, there's something wrong with you. Let me go ahead and try and fix you. That's what that sounds like. It ain't me, it's you. Let me go ahead and fix you. You, that's exactly what that sounds like. And Jesus is saying, no, 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 no. When you, you can't even see past the log in your own eye. And we all thinking right now, yeah, that person has a log in their eye. <laughs> that's not what he's, he's saying. We all have this log in our eye. We can't see past it because not one is righteous. No, not one. Not one of us has permission to say, oh, yeah, I got it all figured out. I got it all taken care of. Jesus says, hypocrite. Don't, don't be a hypocrite. Jesus don't like hypocrites. He, there, Jesus is love, and love hates hypocrites. <laughs> That's just how that works. First, get rid of the log in your own eye. Then you will see well enough. Oh, there is a process. Oh, there is a process. Then you will see well enough to deal with the speck in your friend's eye. Basically, Jesus is saying, stop trying to fix everybody else. Stop calling so much attention to what everybody else is doing wrong. Your job, your employment, your relationships, your better life is an inside job. Can I get an amen on that? It's an inside job. You have what it takes to, to change your surroundings, to change your, how do I want to say this? Not in my notes. What I mean to say is 
You have it in yourself to change your, your, your thinking. What's, what's going on in here? How I'm always looking outside. Well, if they would do this, if they would do that. Well, if, if this person would just change their attitude. No, no, you can change your attitude despite what other people are doing. In fact, there's only one thing we can really control. That's our own behavior. So in that sense, it's not you. It's me. No matter what it is, it's not you. It's me. There is something I can do to change my surrounding. Last week, we talked about five keys to a healthy marriage. We, that was a deep one. That, we, we can go back and watch that on YouTube if you want. You skipped last week so you could be here this week. That's fine. I love you anyways. But there was five keys to a healthy marriage, and it was seek God, fight fair, have fun, stay pure, and never give up. And next week, we're going to be talking about parenting. Come on, somebody. Who's excited to talk about? Everybody like, yep, me and all my kids are coming to this. All my kids are going to come to this. I anticipate this next week, uh, the parenting uh, message that's coming up one week from today, I it's going to be the most powerful message of this entire series. You don't want to miss this. This is going to be strong. And I've, I I've read a lot of books on this subject because I am um, neck deep in parenting with uh, a teenager and two toddlers. So I'm like, please, God, just one phase at a time. I can't take it all. This is crazy. You can cut that part out of the message right there. My son might watch this. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. <laughs> I anticipate that's going to be one of the, the biggest, uh, the biggest, most powerful of this whole series. And we're actually going to dedicate some babies next week. So it's, it's like we planned it, but we didn't. It's just, thanks, Lord, you helped us out on that one. So we're dedicating some babies next week. If you've got a baby to dedicate, man, we'll dedicate them. Just put it on the connection card, and we'll get them up here. We'll, we'll do a group dedication, man. You just, you dedicated, and you dedicated. I'll be like Benny Hinn up here. I'll be like, you all dedicated. You all dedicated. <laughs> well, that was funny. I don't care what you think. That was, that was so funny. I'm so funny right now. Move on, pastor. <laughs> all right, all right, I got it, I got it. <laughs> but today, 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 we are going to be talking about the singles and the daters up in the room. I'm not going to ask you to identify yourself. It's all good. Actually, you know what? If, if, I'm going to do it anyways. I don't care, man. If you are single or looking to, come on, anybody who is single, raise it up in here. Come on, raise it up. Go ahead. Look around for the opposite sex and just take care of it. No, I'm playing. I'm playing. Man, like, like 12 months from now, I'm going to get a thank you card. <laughs> Welcoming babies into the world. Man, <laughs> man this church is weird. <laughs> this church is weird. <laughs> but for this, this message, I actually read up. I, I brought the book with me. Where is it? It's in the back room. I, I forgot it. But there's this book by Andy Stanley called New Rules for Love, Sex, and Dating. Ooh, racy title, I know, but I, I actually dipped into that book a little bit to give you a couple points, but actually this message kind of started with that, so I read that book, and I was like, oh, I like this one point or two, but a lot of this is launched out from my own personal experience, because I got saved as a single man and had to go through all of that, um, so I'm going to give you a lot of just what I learned, and we're going to start with some scripture, but then the rest of it is going to be a lot of my opinion, and I hope you're all right with that, but in this book right here, one of the quotes that kind of kind of struck me, uh, I'm going to put it up on the screen for you too. If you don't want a marriage like the majority of marriages, then stop dating like the majority of daters. Dang, uh, go easy. This is like a life-giving church, right? Come on, take it, slow it down, pump the brakes. No, I'm serious. I'm serious. If we don't, because man, bad dating is easy. Man, it's easy to get away with that stuff. But if we want different results, if we want something different than what we're seeing the world produce, and what we're seeing the world produce right now is like, man, I don't care what religion you're part of, man. You look around and just go, man, this ain't working. This ain't working. And by the way, if you're, if you're not, you know, a, a Christ follower yet, I'm so glad you're here. I, I really am at that, that you would come and listen to what I have to say for, you know, 35 minutes, 45 minutes without even following Christ. That really says a lot about what, what you're interested in, in getting more out of life and, and digging deeper. And so I want to let you know that, that even though you may not be following Christ yet, I, I believe that these principles will work for you regardless. So you can, you can taste and see that the Lord is good on this stuff. You really can. And for, for us Christ followers that are in the room, taste and see. 
that the Lord is good and his way really is better. Can I get an amen right there? If you are single looking for the right person, air quote, right person, if you're thinking that meeting that right person is going to make everything turn around and make everything right, if I, if I find the right person, it's going to make everything right, I want you to think again. I want you to think again because that is not, not the way this works at all. I had to go through this personally, and so it's a topic I'm sharing from experience, and I went through a season of, for, for those of you who don't know, I, I was not born a Christian, okay? And I actually didn't become a Christian until I was 21 years old. Thinking about those years is painful sometimes because I was in the drug scene and I was, you know, uh, using and, and a criminal and, you know, it's better for me to just be an open book about it because you're going to find out probably someone from my past came and told you about me. You'd be like, oh, I knew that already. <laughs> so I, ha I have a very, you got a pastor with a past right here. And so God set me free. That means he can do it with all of you too if you're dealing with anything like that. Amen. But I went through a season. And so I, pre I preface this by saying that, and I went through a season of just going from one person to another, just going from one person to the other, and before I got saved, and even for a moment after I got saved, because if you get saved, that doesn't mean everything turns around just like that. So don't, don't you dare feel condemned if you, oh, I, I raised my hand in church, but not everything's fixed. Hey, this, this thing takes work. This thing takes work. Getting saved doesn't take work, but living a life worthy of Christ, living a life that's actually producing good fruit in my life it takes practice. It takes time. You know, there's certain things. This was my story. I'm standing here with a microphone, so I must be right about it, right? I went, had to go through a couple years of, of pruning, of things that had to fall off, of things that had to get cut off in my life, and, and this was one of those things. So even after I got saved, it, that didn't go away right away. It, so I had to go through this. I had to go through this personally. But I did have, after a couple years of being saved, I had an epiphany, is that how you say it? I had a, it was like a ding moment. Like, not because I was dingy. I still am a little dingy, but I had a ding moment where I was like, you know what? I think I, was, I actually remember this. I'm pretending like I don't remember the exact day and time and place I was at. I was the 24-hour fitness on Cherokee. You know, the one all the way over there. I was there. I was with my buddies. And I was in the bathroom. And I, and I was just, I don't know, I was just thinking. And I was, I was getting changed. And I was about ready to head out. And it just... I just looked around. Nobody was around. I'm like, I'm not going to do this anymore. And what I was talking about is I'm not going to date around anymore. I'm not just going to keep on going from one person to the next. I I'm going to focus on myself. That's what I decided. I'm not going to date, and I, I use that term loosely. I'm not going to date around. I I'm going I'm to I'm gonna, I'm gonna save myself. And Because you don't hear a lot of preaching about this these days. You don't hear a lot because it alienates people and you know, not, not everyone's single, so you want to just talk about something that is for everybody. But let me just tell you, man, if I just heard one message about this, it probably would have helped me a lot. And so that's why I'm doing this. I'm doing this for everybody who is single or might be single soon or, or whatever. Man, this is going to be helpful. I, and I really, and anybody who has single friends, it'll, it'll arm you, it'll equip you to give some health and some help to some people around you. I, man, because when, when I was coming up, it just seemed like church and the preaching was for people in their 40s and 50s, and all the people in their 40s and 50s are like, amen, as it should be. Well, man, it's like we talk about finishing well so much. Well, what about starting well? What about entering well? What about going into this Christian thing well? Can we ever be too good at the basics? No, I don't think so. So we need to spend a little bit more talking about this. I want to do a little sum sum for the singles and daters out there. Like when I was here, it would have been so helpful for me. So I want to start by busting a couple myths. Myth number one is this. It's the right person myth. It's a myth. The right person myth. The right person myth says once you meet the right person, everything's going to be okay. Once you meet the right person, man, everything's going to be, oh, I'm, I'm good now. Oh, yeah, we're all set. Man, I could talk about this for a while, but when things don't work out, you must have chosen the wrong right person. So you look for the next right person. No amens, huh? Okay. All right. I must be preaching hard then. Okay. Because you find Mr. Right, you find Mrs. Right, and it doesn't take but six months to find out, well, they ain't all right. <laughs> and so I must have chosen wrong, so I'm going to pick a new right person. And let me, where does that end? It ends never. That's when. 
I'm not saying there isn't anyone right for you, but if you think that they are going to show up and everything's going to be fixed in your life, all of a sudden, you got another thing coming. That is the right person myth. Get it out of your head right there. Number two is the promise myth. The promise myth. This is a little bit less known. This is a little bit less talked about. But the promise myth says a promise replaces the need for preparation. As if I say I do and all my problems just going to go away. All my issues just going to go away. And all the married people did not say amen because you're like, nope, that didn't work. It's a myth. It's a promise myth. And single people have this in their mind, like once I get married, then my porn addiction is going to go away. Once I get married, oh, then all my selfishness and greed is going to go away. Once I, once, I get, once I say I do, then somehow, magically, I'm just going to be like all good. Everything's going to be all settled. It's a myth. That's called the promise myth. You make a promise, a.k.a. make a vow, and then you have a party, a reception, so, so make a promise, have a party, and you will magically be a different person. And, and that works for like six months. And you happy for like six months. It just is a myth. It wears off. It wears off. No coach. Let's put it this way. Come on, sports fans. No coach would substitute practice for a promise. Oh, we, we don't need to practice. I promise we're going to win. Man, what sport? Come on, it's like the Niners said that, man. I promise. Look at our record. We're going to win. I was rooting for them, man. Why are, you, why are you booing right now? They're booing me, Facebook. Come on, get them to stop. Why would you, e why would you ever think that was going to be a strategy that works? I'm just going to make a promise. Everything's going to be all good. No, that's a myth. Um, what these two myths come down to is deferring. And we're lazy people. We love to defer things. Anything that we can put off, anything that's going to make us not need to work on ourselves, we'll do that. Or we will not do that. It's called deferring. Waiting for the right person and, and just making a promise. And that is going to exclude us from needing to do any work. But I'm going to drop some heavy theology on you right now. So heavy theology and it's like brain busting deep. Are you ready for this? If you are not preparing, you won't be prepared. Wow. wow, how many years of seminary did that take? Eight years, eight years of seminary. If you're not preparing, you won't, you won't be prepared. You've got to be prepared. You've got to be preparing if you want to be prepared. I know it's super deep, and we're all preparing for something. Right now, every single day, what you're doing is preparing you for something, but what is it preparing you for? Are you deferring or are you practicing? And here's what I'm saying. If you want to be married one day, you should be preparing for marriage by staying faithful and pure. It's called preparing for what you're, what you're looking forward to. I mean, if that's what you really want. I mean, if you want that. I remember laying on my, I, was, I went through a recovery center um, and I got clean for a year-long program in Salvation Army. Whoop, whoop, Salvation Army right now. And I was laying in my bunk, you know, it was like a donated mattress. And I, I was like 15 days clean or something. It was just a hot mess. But I had a little bit of clarity and I had this desire. I wanted to be married one day. I wanted to be married. Like it was just this, I want to marry, you know what I actually said? I want to marry a nice church girl. That's what <laughs> We, we, you know, us drug addicts, we just think different. We just think different. And we, that's the only thing I had to like put words around it. But what I was trying to say was I want to, I want to marry a nice girl. Cause I never met a nice girl ever in my life up to that point. And I wanted to marry a nice girl. And, and what I learned over time was if I want a nice girl, I better learn to be a nice boy. And that was a lesson. You'd think it's so simple, but that was a lesson hard learned. Even after getting clean, even after getting saved, I had to train myself, teach myself, man, what am I preparing for? What am I preparing for? If you want to have kids one day, you should be preparing for parenthood by caretaking and growing in patience. God, lots of patience. Lots of patience. I can't even talk about that right now. Man, the babies are 3, 4, and 15. It's just wild right now. I can't wait for next week's message. I really can't. I'm just going to let it all hang out. 
man, watch out, man, it's going to be flying. If you want to stay single, the Bible talks about that too, honestly. Like if, if being single seems like your route, I'm, you don't have to get married. You don't have to do that. You don't have to go into that. The Bible talks a lot about it's a high calling. Y'all are like, yeah, I get it. I get it. It's a high calling to give yourself fully to God and stay single for his glory. It's a high calling. And I know, I know some good people, really great people, that have chosen that for their life. That's all I'm going to talk about that for a minute. But all that means, if you want to date around and live a free life as a single person, well, it's a free country. You can do that. You know, I didn't, I didn't come to, like, follow you around and make all your choices for you. Do whatever you want. But you might be preparing and conditioning for self, yourself for something that you don't even really want. You might be conditioning yourself and, and preparing yourself, doing it the world's way, you know, dating around and... And, and just do, doing whatever's normal, whatever Netflix says is normal. I should modernize it. Whatever Hulu says is normal. Whatever YouTube shows us is normal. If we just do what, what the world is showing us is normal, we might be preparing ourselves for something that we don't even really want if we just play that tape out. Man, I don't want that. It, would this behavior be acceptable in my marriage? Oh, I can't even talk about this. This is my main point. This is my big point for the whole day. Are you ready for it? This is it right here. Are you the person, the person you are looking for is looking for? I'm going to slow it down. I'm going to say it one more time. You can read along. Are you the person, the person you are looking for is looking for? I think if, if we would just begin to think about it like that, I, I, I learned it later in life. I learned it after, after I got married. I didn't even learn this principle. But am I, I just lucked out, basically. I was blessed. God helped me. But it wasn't because I understood the concept. So I want to give you something that I didn't even have. I want you to understand this. Am I the person? The person I'm looking for is looking for. It comes back to the main idea of our series. And, and that answer does not lie outside of ourself. It's not them. They're not going to fix me. It's me. Well, am I the person that that, that that good girl is looking for? That that church girl is looking for? Am I the woman? that a good man would be interested in? Or am I preparing myself for when I meet that man, he's not even really gonna be interested in me because of what I've been trying to do to get them. Does that, does that make sense? Like we don't see it, but it's so clear. That's why I call this message completely single. Because we have to learn to be complete in our singleness. If, we're, if you're single here today, if you know someone who is, we need to help people not feel like, well, the, the next person is going to help you. The next, the next boyfriend is going to help you. The next girlfriend, if you just find the right person, they're going to smooth you all out. You know, they're just going to iron out all the wrinkles. No, 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 no. If you, if you think that way, two halves don't make a whole in this situation. Two halves make a whole lot of drama. That's all that happens. Two halves do not make a whole. But when two complete people come together, that's a beautiful thing. And you don't have to be perfect but you've got to be thinking this way. Healthy dating is, write this in your notes, healthy dating is exercise. Not like that, everybody. Come on, come on, slow down. <laughs> You're like, exercise, I got you, pastor. No, no, you don't. Healthy dating is exercise. Healthy dating should exercise your courage muscle. Let me talk to you for just a minute about healthy dating. What, what does healthy dating look like then? Healthy dating should exercise your courage muscle. It takes courage for you guys to step up and ask her out on a date. It takes courage to do that. And ladies, it takes courage to say no if he's a dirtbag. Or it takes courage to say yes if he's a nice guy. Healthy dating takes courage because you have to step out and do things. And, but what is that practice for? It's practice for having courage in your marriage. It's practice for having courage. Healthy dating should exercise your self-control muscle. Man, if we're not exercising self-control in our dating, what makes you think you're going to have self-control when you're married? Oh, man, I'm, you got to look at me like I'm never coming back. Well, maybe you will because you might have to go through this, and then you'll come back and say, oh, man, he's right. I should have been exercising more self-control because what I'm really looking for is someone who has self-control and for myself to have some self-control. Take self-control to wait and not have sex and fool around before marriage. And that's part of why that principle exists. 
is because we're practicing, we're strengthening ourselves, we're becoming men, we're becoming women, grown into people of self-control. No, I don't have to do everything my body tells me. No, I don't. I don't have to. And, and my perfect wife deserves me at a place where I don't have to just go along with every whim my body has. Is this adding up? Is this making sense? Healthy dating should exercise your honor muscle. Honor. It should exercise your honor muscle. It takes honor to show someone you care about them, not, not, just, sensu- not just sensuality, not just sexuality. I mean, sex these days doesn't prove anything except you have a pulse. No, I know. I know. Come on. Ease up. Ease up. But I'm, I'm being serious. That doesn't prove anything. That doesn't honor someone. Oh, I'm giving you. Yet. No, 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 no. It doesn't prove anything. That's too easy. And this world that we're living in right now, man, and it's not just America. I, last year, I had a, a privilege of, of visiting another country. I, w- I went over to Sarajevo. I'm down in the Balkans area, and I w- was in Germany and then went down. And I was in Sarajevo. I was walking down the street. We were on a mission trip, and I'm walking, I'm walking down the street, and the porn was right there on the sidewalk. And it was like, ouch. I had to run away. I was like, oh, my gosh, what the, what in the world are we living in right now? It's everywhere. It's absolutely everywhere. Our culture is so sexualized, man. This one, this one is tougher than it used to be. I believe that. I mean, I haven't lived through all the generations. I've only lived in my own generation, but... It's got to be worse than it was, right, with the internet happening. And it's just, it was right there on the sidewalk, in like a bookshelf. They were slinging it. Here, give me a dollar. You can have this. I'm like, I couldn't believe my, my eyes. We have to work at this, guys. I'm not just talking to guys. I don't mean that. Everybody. This is for everybody. This is for men and women. We have to, we have to work our purity out. We have to actually be on, on mission to stay away from that stuff. These days, we have to be on mission to stay away from it. We actually have to go above and beyond to keep ourselves pure. Because if we just coast, just like me and Sarajevo, it's not just America. It's everywhere. It's absolutely everywhere. Honor, on the other hand, shows how you feel about a person and how you feel about yourself. Because people that do dishonorable things and dishonor others actually have a low opinion of themselves actually have a low opinion of themselves. And a healthy dating, healthy dating should exercise your plan and prep muscle. Guys, if you're not planning and preparing for going on dates with girls that you wouldn't mind spending the rest of your life with, what are you doing, <laughs> right? We think that it's not the easy path that gets a woman that is worth having. Girls, this goes for you too. It's not the easy path that leads to a guy that's worth having. Let's talk about healthy dating with one more thing. Healthy dating is preparation. Healthy dating is preparation because you play like you practice. I talk, I talk to our musicians about this sometimes. If you didn't notice, I was on the worship team today. Did you notice that? Yeah, I was on there. And I've been, I've been leading worship for a long time, a lot longer than I've been a pastor of church. But I was, I've been on a worship, I've been on, in bands my whole life, really, um, because I was in some rock and roll bands when I was growing up. And those were fun times. It was, it was pretty cool. But back then, even, how you practice is how you play. Yeah, how you rehearse is how it usually goes down. It's not like, and sometimes I talk to our musicians here, you can't even, how great is our God? Sing with me, how great is our God? And then expect the lights to come on. How great is our God? Be like, everything changes when the lights come on, right? No, 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 no. How you practice is how you play. So what are you practicing for? What are you preparing for? Like you can just be all professional as soon as you say, I do. We talked about this. When you are going through life, how you practice is how you play. This is not just about dating, by the way. This is a principle that's much larger than that. It just applies to dating as well. Let me, let me summarize. When you cut corners at work when nobody's looking, you will end up cutting corners when the inspection comes because that's what you're dialed in to do. You are training yourself to cut corners. Every time you cut a corner, you're teaching yourself that this is the way to go. Every time. So it's not just in in dating. It's also in your work life um, because that's what you're dialed in to do. If you play sports, you know. If you don't hustle during practice, you won't have all the hustle that you need when it's game time. That's exactly what happened last week, man. They just thought it was all good and everything was going to go fine. I'm stuck on that. I know. I'm stuck on that. I can't 
stop thinking about it. So if you think you can date your way, any old way you want to, and then everything is going to magically change when you say I do, then we're just in for a rude awakening on that. No, it's, it's kind of like this. I'm looking for someone who is like, got their stuff together. I'm, I'm looking for a girl. I'll just put myself in there. I'm looking for a girl who likes the color blue, you know, but I, I kind of like wearing this, you know, this is, this is how I want to live my life right here. But, and so I'm just going to be like, yeah, dating around and, and feeling good. Cause I, I look good in this color. I like just going in and out of relationships. This is kind of easy, but you know, the girl I want, she likes the color blue. So when she shows up, I'm just going to be like, drop it off somehow. Well, let me just tell you, that is not how it works. Because this is not something that you just put on and take off. This is you on the inside. Who are you becoming on the inside? Is this someone the person you're looking for is looking for? Because you can't just fake this stuff. You cannot do it. It will not last. We try and we try. But this applies to dating. It applies to work. It applies to the, which friends you have. Show me your friends. I'll show you your future. Somebody needs to hear that today. Man, it's, it's a new season. It's a new you. A new year has begun. And there's some people in your life that are just not healthy for you right now. There's some people in your life that you don't need to be mean to them, okay? You don't need to, you know, blast them on Facebook. You don't need to, you know, but you might need to block them. <laughs> you don't need to blast them, but you might need to block them. And you might need to stop answering the phone. And you might just need to cut some people out of your life right now. Because, man, you, you want to wear blue, you know, you want to find someone who likes blue and you want to be that person. But the people all around you, they're like, red is what's up, though. Come on, like, put that on. Every time you try and take it off, they'll put it back on you. And you don't need that. You, you can't afford it. I can't afford it. Man, even, even me, I, I need to be like, you know, I can't spend so much time with you because it's killing me. And I, if I'm not healthy, then I can't do anything for anybody. There's some of us here today that, that need to say goodbye in order to say hello. Let's take some next steps here. Here's what I want you to do. Number one, I want you to focus on becoming the right person. I want you to focus on becoming the right person, not finding the right person. I, I want you to focus on becoming the right person. You don't need to find the right person. I mean, if you become the right person, the right person is going to find you. Straight up. Straight up. They'll be, you'll be swatting them away like flies. You become the right person. <laughs> that was too much. <laughs> that just rolled out. You'll be swatting them away, man. Like, shoo, girl, shoo. No, 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 no. You focus on becoming the right person, and the right person will present themselves. They're not going to fix you. You finding them, is, they're not going to fix you. And, and you shouldn't try to fix them. That is a whole other message right there. You shouldn't try to fix them. Because it's an inside job. You can't fix them. Y you can't fix them. You can't. You cannot fix them. All you can do is you can work on you. You can work on you. And that's the best that you can do. And it's really, it's really the best approach. It's an it's approach of modeling what's right. Okay, uh, folks, I'm becoming the right person, number one. Number two, I've got some practical next steps for you. Guys, I'm talking to you now. Men, listen up. Guys, ask girls on dates. Underline, circle, write. A date is different than hanging out. Okay, example number one. I would like to invite you to blank. If at any point you said you want to hang out? You did it wrong. You did it wrong. That is not honoring. That is not what we do. Guys, are you listening? Ask girls on dates. Healthy dating leads to healthy marriages. Healthy courtship, if you've been around the church a long time, leads to healthy marriages. Now, now, I, I know exactly what unhealthy relationships lead to, okay? Nobody's feeling any guilt in here because I did what you did way worse than you did it. I promise you that, okay? Let's talk afterwards. I bet I could one-up you. It's not a challenge. I am a little competitive, but don't, we don't need to talk about that right now, okay? No condemnation here. I'm just telling you. I'm just telling you that, that you, can, you can change your ways, and you can, you can start on a new leaf. Because clarity is honoring. When you, are, when you show clarity to someone, you're, you're honoring them. 
well, the way we do it around here, even at church, is like we have things, we do things with excellence, and we try to make things as clear as possible because we honor people, and we want to take care of them. We show them that we went through the effort to think things through. Are you see? Example. Men, here's another example. I have tickets to see the Sacramento Kings next Thursday. If you're available, I would like to invite you. You see what you did? You see what you did right there? That was so good. You did it. Congratulations. Look, you went out and invested your own money. You had a plan. You know what day it is. And you gave her an out. If you can make it, because now the ball's in her court. Now, because you were stressing leading up to that. You're like, oh my gosh, I'm going to spend all this money. And she's going to say no. And what? But if she's worth it, she's worth it. And then, then the stress goes on her. And then she's like texting all her friends. Oh my God, he asked me to the Kings game. What do I do? You pass that buck along. It's good. You did the right thing. That's a good example. Now, next, the next uh, action step for you is this. This is for you ladies. Are you listening to me? Number three is this. Ladies, agree to dates. Guys, ask her on a date. Ladies, agree to dates. Do not agree to hang out. That is bad. Don't just hang out because where you set the bar on that first encounter is where it's going to live. Guys naturally are just path of least resistance. If she's cool with this, I'm just going to go ahead and stay right here. I don't know what it is about us. I don't know what happened along the way. I'm not sure. But ladies, this part is up to you. And, and if he says want to hang out, don't, don't just say this. Did you have something in mind? He won't. He didn't have something in mind, or else he would have asked you especially for that. No, he didn't have anything in mind. And don't follow it. Well, we could have coffee, because then you're asking him out. Don't ask him out. No, you're worth it. You are worth it. You are, you're worth it for, for him to say, no, I, I, I want to I pave the way for this. I want to I go through the effort and energy, because you're worth it. Because you're worth it. Agree to dates. Don't agree to hang out sometimes. Ladies, respect yourself enough to expect this behavior, you are worth it. Guys, don't lose yourself in laziness. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> it's a lot easier for the girls to hear it. But I'm a guy, so I can be a little harder on it. Don't lose yourself to laziness. Guys are always looking for the easiest way to do something. In some situations, like your work, you know, finding a better way to whatever, you know, is going to get you a promotion because you're going to help. But in this situation, it's not going to help. Don't lose yourself to laziness. If she's worth it, work for it. If she's worth it, work for it. Number four, don't allow mistreatment. Um, obvious, but not sometimes. Don't allow mistreatment. You are too good for that. We need to agree with our Father in heaven that says you are worth it. But I love them, but I can handle it. No, stop, get out. Don't allow yourself to be mistreated. You are teaching them that the behavior is okay. You're teaching yourself that that is your worth. If you have kids, bringing them into that situation, you're teaching them that it's okay. Mistreatment is not ever okay. It's not okay. You don't have to put up with it. Not all men are like that. Not all women are like that. Okay, Because it does go both ways. I don't mean to harp only on men or women on this. It goes both ways. Physical and mental abuse is never okay and should never be tolerated. I really shouldn't even have to say this, but I'm going to say it anyways. Don't tolerate it. Don't, you don't have to put up with it. You don't have to do that. Even if, even if mm, everyone, how about we just don't mistreat anyone? Can we start there? Let's just, let's just not mistreat anybody. Let's not treat anybody that way. But especially in our dating, that even if people don't seem to mind being mistreated, isn't it funny? Some people seem like, oh, they're fine with it. Like, they're okay with it. They're used to this. No. No. They're not used to it. It's not okay. Just because they're, no. Just no. If you're a Jesus follower, I really shouldn't even have to tell you this. But don't lie. Don't mislead. The truth hurts less than betrayal. The truth hurts less than betrayal. Well, I'm just trying to save their... Mistreatment can also be lying, by the way. I'm just trying to save their feelings. Saving someone's feelings is misleading and cowardly. It's okay to hurt someone's feelings. It's not okay to lie and cover things up because you don't want to go through the trouble of being found out. That is not okay. That's mistreatment. Be honest. 
tell the truth. This practice for being honest with someone is going to last for the rest of your life. It's a muscle that needs to get exercised. Guys, don't be a hypocrite. T treating girls in ways you would never let your mom or your sister be treated. Think of it that way. Would I treat my sister this way? Would I let someone treat my sister this way? Okay, maybe I shouldn't do it then. And girls, don't be a commodity. Bought and sold and traded and discarded and treated however which way. Don't, don't, let, don't let that be the story. Don't let it happen. Don't allow mistreatment. Last one is this. Never force it. Never force it. This stuff has to be said. I'm just going to go for it. Never force it. I know it feels like time is of the essence when you're dating. It's like, oh, man, I better get in there quick. But when it comes to dating, time is your best friend. Time is your absolute best friend. Take your time. Take things slow. Are you afraid that he or she will get away? Well, I got news for you. If they're going fast with relationships, then you don't want them. You don't want them. You're like, oh, well, they're going to get away. I went through this exact situation with Tiffany. Okay, so if I haven't said it enough, Tiffany was the first and only healthy relationship I'd ever been in. And I had the Holy Spirit helping me, okay, because I didn't have all of this to guide me. But there was another guy who, who was interested, I think. Okay. I didn't have all the information, but, but Tiffany was straight up on the market, okay? And she was up there, and she had her blonde hair, and she was waving it back and forth. And she had her guitar like this when she was, like, singing and, you know, Dreamweaver, and I was like, yes, hallelujah, I'm at the right church, I know it. And so I wasn't the only interested party. I was not. But there was something inside of me that said, you know what? I don't, have to, I don't have to dive in front of her because I think, I don't think she's that easy. I don't think that she's going to just take whatever first thing comes her way because, I mean, she sees what's right in front of her, right? Come on. Mom, this other guy, nah, nah, not even close. Did he have style like this? No, I don't think so. Was he? No, 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 no. He was, so I just waited. I just waited. I remember I had some conversation with people, and I was like, there's somebody, but I'm, I'm just going to wait this out. I'm going to see how she responds to this. Because time is your best friend when you're dating or when you're thinking about that. Time is your best friend. So you have to teach yourself that self-control. I wanted to see if, uh, you know, how she was going to respond to that. And she responded the way I was praying she would. <laughs> You know, I, I watched her hold her ground and protect her singleness, and obviously she was waiting for the right guy to come along. Amen. Amen. <laughs> to be complete and single, remember this always. Are you the person the person you are looking for is looking for? Are you the person the person you're looking for is looking for? Amen. Following Jesus in the realm of romance will instantaneously make your life better. I got one more thing I want to share with you. I'm going to let you go. You know, as a preacher, I'm a glorified rephraser. I basically take scriptures and rephrase them. That's, that's what I do. It's great. It's a great life. I love doing it. And I rephrase things in ways that, that take, because, you know, you have the Bible. It was written. It was Greek. It was Hebrew. A little bit of Aramaic. And then they translated that into English for us. And some people love the way they translated it the first time. They keep it right there. But it's a translation. And then what I like to do is I like to translate that into life. I don't want to translate it into another language. I want to translate it into life and to make it a life application. So I want to rephrase a scripture for you, and maybe it'll help you out. It's Proverbs 18.22. Proverbs 18.22. I want to circle this, circle around this scripture just a little bit. And it says this, The man who finds a wife finds a treasure, and he receives favor from the Lord. A man who finds a wife finds a treasure, and he receives favor from the Lord. I mean, this, apply, this applies to ladies, too. I don't think what was implied was this is only, only the man finds a good thing. The woman doesn't find a good thing. The woman who finds a husband finds dirty laundry. No, that's not what this is saying. I think, I think it's implied that both parties win. Can we, can we agree on that much? Both parties win. When a good man finds a good woman, and, and they get both, both parties win, okay? We're on the same page so far. What it does not say, here's the angle I want to take. What it does not say is a man who finds a girl and gets married and says, I do, finds a treasure. No, a man who finds 
a wife, a woman who finds a husband. What does that mean? Not already a wife, like to someone else. That is not what I'm talking about. That is not what this scripture is talking about. Finding a woman who's already a wife. Okay, okay, move on. Move on, pastor. No, a woman who is able to be a wife. A woman who's ready to be a wife has been preparing herself to be a wife. Has the character to be a good wife. And likewise, a woman who finds a man who has the character of a husband, who's been preparing himself to be a husband, who's been practicing self-control, who's been practicing restraint, who's been getting himself ready. A man who finds a woman who's ready to be a wife, who's been preparing herself, saving herself to be a wife, finds a good thing. Goes both ways. Now, if you're single, be completely single. Because a, a woman is looking for you, but she's looking for the you who is who's ready for her. A man is looking for you, if you're interested, in, if you're in this realm, who's, who needs you to be who God is, is calling you to be. Are you the person, the person you're looking for is looking for? If, if anybody could feel down about this message, it's me. I wasn't there. I wasn't ready. But I'm telling you right now, God can redeem anybody. He makes us white as snow. He loves making old things and making them new again. He can help you with this. I have a feeling that a lot of you are feeling like, man, I can't do that. I can't do this. What, what do I need to be good enough? I can't be good enough. No, you can't. With Christ, you can. With God, you can. Following Jesus, you can. Give him your life. We talked about this last week. Seek the one as you wait for your two. Seek the one as you wait for your two. I want you to bow your heads and close your eyes with me. God, whether we're married, single, in between, Lord, meet us here. Open our hearts, open our minds, open our eyes, open our ears. Lord, you want to do something brand new in us. And I thank you for being so good to us. You're so forgiving, so honoring, so patient with us. But Lord, we all need the same thing here today. And it's you. We need you to help us with this. We need you to complete us. We need you to help us be the person that we, that we really desire to be. We need you today. So I want to give an invitation to every single person here. That really, it all starts with number one. Who's your number one? It's not a person. It shouldn't be a person. It should be God. Maybe he was number one on your list, but he dropped down on that list. And you know right here, right now, that you are not where you should be with your relationship with God. In a moment, I'm going to give you an opportunity to fix that and say, God, I'm putting you back at the top of my list. And there might be some of you here that have never even considered doing this. You don't even know how you ended up in church or how you ended up tuning in. I want to tell you right now that you put Jesus at the top of your list. The, your list is going to be transformed. All your needs, all your desires. He's going to make you complete. There is a Jesus-shaped hole in every single one of our lives and only Jesus can fill it. So right now, if there's anyone here who's, who's ready to put Jesus at the top of your list, if that's you today, you want to put Jesus at the top of your list or put him on your list for the very first time, just in the stillness and quiet of this moment, I would ask you to lift your hand and say, that's me, Pastor. I want to put Jesus at the top of my list. Amen. I see you. Go ahead. Lift it. Amen. I see you. Amen. I see you too. Amen. I see you. Amen. I see you. Amen. I see you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for opening our hearts today. Everyone, can we pray this together? If Jesus is your Lord, if you're following Jesus, let's, let's all pray this prayer again together and make Jesus our Lord and pray this prayer of, of forgiveness and acceptance of Jesus as our Lord. Come on, let's pray. Father God, thank you for sending your Son, Jesus Christ, to die on a cross for my sins 
Make me new. Fill me with your spirit. Forgive me of all my sins. I repent. I, I want to head in your direction. Direct my path. Direct every step. I give you it all. The good, the bad, and the ugly of my life. It's all yours. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, you know what to do. It's time to celebrate. Come on, celebrate. Angels are dancing in heaven right now. For those people that made that decision, I am so proud of you. So proud of you.